Hi everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter Music Education. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing with y'all tonight because I'm going to um, be talking a little bit about um, some of my lesson plans, some more specific ideas, um, especially for second grade. I'm going to be sharing some ideas for uh, Latinx History Month. Um, and so I'm going to try and just dive in and give you a more sort of complete view of what my second grade lessons look like now that I sort of know what they look like and I've taught through them and have any sort of idea of what that's going to do. Um, and then uh, also talk about adaptations and, and lesson ideas um, a little bit more tonight. So first, a uh, couple disclaimer things. So um, if you hear me talk about any book resource idea thing that you're like, ooh, he said I can find that, whatever. Um, I'm gonna, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to links um, that I talk about in this video. So if you're like, oh, I wanna see that video that he talked about or showed us, it's on the links page. So if you go to makemomentsmatter.org, um, under the videos tab, there's a Musical Mondays recap, 2020, 2021. Um, and so uh, all those links and ideas are there if you wanna borrow them, take them, adapt them, all of that. Um, you can also, the Facebook, it's the bottom of the, um, the caption. There's a, a direct link and on Instagram, there's a link in profile where you can get that direct link to all those resources and ideas. Um, I also try and post as much as I can in my Facebook group, Every Moment Matters, music education community. Um, there are a lot of great conversations going on there, talks about resources, things that you can use and adapt, and um, I hope that's a great resource for you. So, but um, check that out. That's um, Every Moment Matters, music education community, and you can find that on Facebook. Um, one more thing that I wanna talk about before I jump into ideas. Um, so, I, I've been talking the last several weeks about interactive games, games that you can use that I've like maybe created. Um, sorry, Facebook, I'm trying to make, make this work. Games that I've created, things that I've used, um, spe uh, specifically that you can integrate into learning management systems like uh, Canvas or Google Classroom or Blackboard, things like that that you can send out to students. You can use on iPads, you can use on tablets, you can use on Chromebooks. I've been showing a lot of those um, and so I wanted to do a giveaway of those so that um, if you're like, well, I'm really interested in this but I um, I don't have any yet, I wanted to do a giveaway. So on, um, on the links page, uh, there's a link to the giveaway for that. It's a bundle of uh, interactive games, there are rhythm games, treble clef games, uh, notes, symbols, vocabulary, all, all the different games I have. There's at least one or two examples in the bundle. Four people are going to win. Uh, the, the giveaway ends tomorrow night, Tuesday night at midnight, so you have until midnight of the 22nd to enter. Um, and I'll announce those winners on Wednesday. So that's on the links page, but definitely go and enter. Tell your friends, they can all enter, um, and four people are gonna win. And it's just a bundle of interactive games. And like I said, they're, they're fun because you can integrate them into um, all the things you're already using. You can use them in person in class. I'm gonna try and show an example of how I do that today. Um, but it, they're there if you're interested and the giveaway is happening right now. So go check that out when the video is over, or bookmark it, save it, link it for later. Or if you're on like, watching on your phone, but you have your computer, go sign up now. Um, okay, so um, I wanna talk just real quick about um, how can we connect with other people? Uh, because it's just something that's been on my mind recently, and this is just sort of, I got not a soapbox moment, but just something I've been thinking of. A lot of times I'll jump on Facebook, and I am in so many music teacher Facebook groups that like my feed is just filled with comments and thoughts and whatever. And I'm like scrolling through, I'm like, where are the dog photos? <laughs> it's been a long day. And, uh, but there are so many conversations happening, and so many of them are good. Um, in some of the Facebook groups, I, I find that sometimes people are like, I need a resource for this, go. And that, I don't always respond to those because I'm like, there are 120 answers on there already. But what I've learned is if you need a resource or you need something or you have a question, those so many of those groups have been around for so long, like search the group first because there might have been 24 different conversations on like, SEL things for the music room or, you know, uh, Latinx Heritage Month or whatever. So do a quick search first. Then the, the one thing I want to say to all the people commenting and asking questions is just remember we are all in a different situation. Um, before COVID happened, when I was doing workshops 
all around or going to state conventions and things like that. I met so many different people who are like, well, I teach in the classroom or I am in a mobile or I don't have a room or I have a room and it's huge or I have every instrument under the sun or I have no instruments or every kid has a, a laptop and a MacBook and a Apple TV. Like everyone ha yeah, has everything and some people are like, we don't even have paper. You know, like everyone is in a very, very different situation that was before the pandemic. And now we're in a place where some people are teaching hybrid, some people are teaching in person, some people are teaching... Um, you know, only online. I mean, we're all in different situations. We all have different technology. So when you ask a question or if you go to leave a comment, just keep that in mind because some people are like, well, you could just do such and such. And well, I don't have any of those resources, you know? So just sort of keep that in your head as you're asking questions or thinking like, wow, I really wish I could do that, but I don't have iPads. Or I really wish that I could do this thing, but I don't have such and such an instrument, or I don't have room. Or um, it, it's really easy to get in those Facebook threads and be like, "Well, I don't have anything," and just be like really frustrated, <laughs> or to see the frustration. But just go in there like with the mindset of like, "I'm coming, looking for ideas, and what can I get out of it, and how can I contribute and help others, and what does that look like?" And so just. Just some thoughts, um, especially because I've had a couple people come to me like, well, "What do you do?" And um, so it's it's great to have those conversations but just you know we're all working as a community and just remember and like i said i think i have some fun perspective because i've taught in a couple different states in a couple different situations and uh, met a lot of people and there's i don't even think there's a district in the country where from one building to the next everything is the same it's not you know um so just keep that in your head <laughs> as we as we go through ideas and thoughts especially tonight so I'm going to share things that like I can do or I am doing that maybe you can't do or maybe you'd have to adapt or change and 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 try a different way always good to have that in your head of how can I adapt how can I change how can I take this and use it for my students okay I want to talk about <clears throat> Latinx Heritage Month um, some people call it Hispanic Heritage Month um, I started, I've chosen to start calling it Latinx Heritage Month. A lot of people are doing that for a lot of different reasons, but um, you can read some really cool articles about that. It's still the same basic Heritage Month, but I'm just, you know, calling it something different to be a little bit more inclusive. So I want to share just some of the books that I'm using and then talk about how I'm using them because, um, well, I'll get to that. <laughs> okay, so um, I have a whole list on Amazon of books that it's in like an ideas list of where I can just collect all the books into one place um, and I can share that list with anyone. Um, so all there are a ton of books there and I'm going to be adding more in the next day or two of books that would be perfect for Latinx Heritage Month um, where you can share with kids about musicians or history or instruments or whatever that are part of the um, Latinx Latinx uh, world, um, which is a huge, huge, huge uh, world and um, community. So um, there's there's that on Amazon. You don't have to buy from Amazon. You can buy buy from any of the discount websites. You can ask a friend. You can you know um, ask your librarian to get the book for you. But I put them all on um, that list so that you can go grab the ISBN. You can grab the author. You can grab whatever you want. Um, and then go find it somewhere else if you want, or you can buy on Amazon if you want. Um, but these are some of the books that I am using currently or will be using the next few weeks that I think are great. So, um, my name is Celia. There are a lot of, there, well, there aren't a lot. There are three or four really popular books about Celia Cruz. This is, I think, my favorite one. Um, I like it for a couple reasons. Um, I shared about this one last year, so I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with this one. But I love this one because I think the illustrations are just super gorgeous. Um, it talks about the life of Celia Cruz. Um, it has some really fun language in there, some really fun um, like descriptive language, but also like boom, 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 beat the congos, clap, 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 go the hands, shake, 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 go the hips. Like it's fun sort of automatopoeia words. I also love that it also is in Spanish, um, especially because we're celebrating a month where uh, the majority of the people that we're celebrating and remembering speak Spanish. And so um, I, I love this book for that reason, having both languages. Now, if you're not comfortable reading Spanish, um, and a lot of people aren't. I'm semi comfortable, but I still feel like uh, my I, I still stumble a little bit over the words. That's okay. I mean, if you're just if you're trying and and you feel confident reading in Spanish, great. If you have a couple of hiccups, I don't think that the Spanish speakers in your class are going to be like, ooh, 
going to write to, you know, like they're not doing, you know, the reading, reading fluency quiz where they're like, ooh, missed that one. But they're, you know, it's good to for kids who are Spanish speakers or not Spanish speakers to hear Spanish being used in the classroom because that is the life of these people that we're celebrating. So why not use the language that, that goes with the culture? So um, if you're comfortable reading, great. If not, what can you do? So what you might do is you might um, like, you might video record or take like a picture of the book or something and put it on a PowerPoint or have um, some sort of thing where like you could have a native Spanish speaker reading the Spanish passages and then you could read the English part and then press play on something like a, you know, a recording or whatever where, the, where it can be reread in Spanish. Like that's a really fun, cool idea if you don't feel comfortable reading the Spanish. Just so that, that kids are getting that um, along with the book because that's a big part. Or maybe you read some of the pages in Spanish, but not all. Or maybe, you know, whatever you want to do. But I would definitely encourage you to, to think about options for including Spanish language when you're reading the book. So this book is really cool. Um, it, the pictures are gorgeous, tells the life of Celia Cruz at the end. It does have a little bit of a biography if you want um, to read through that. And like I said, I just think the, the, the photos are wonderful. I'll talk about what to do with that in a second once I talk. Oh, and this is, uh, my name is Celia, by The Life of Celia Cruz by uh, Monica Brown, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. If you're like, slow down, I need to write down the author. It's on the links page. Yeah, okay. Um, another one, same author, uh, Monica Brown, same illustrator, Rafael Lopez, um, is Tito Puente, Mambo King. Um, this one, um, is another one that's just beautifully illustrated, also in English and Spanish, similar in that it has the sort of onomatopoeia, well, not even onomatopoeia, it's sort of just uh, sounds that mimic musical sounds. Um, so like, uh, tum tick a tock tick, tum tick tom tom, sort of a mambo sort of a thing. Um, I, I just love this book. He was so loud his neighbors in Spanish Harlem said, get that boy some music lessons. And that is exactly what his mother did. So he went and he uh, talks about how Tito loved to dance. Again, I think the pictures are just so much fun. And the story is great. It tells the story, um, again, with English and Spanish. And then at the end, it's got a little bit about Tito Puente, a little bit of biography, both in English and Spanish. Um, it even has this fun page where it has musical notation. Follow this simple rumba beat. This is traditionally played with with three instruments, the bongos, the congas, and the timbales, of course, because that's part of the book where they talk about that. So these two books, talking about um, two very famous musicians um, in the Spanish-speaking world, Celia Cruz and Tito Puente. Um, what do you do with them? I, I feel like a lot of times um, I'll share a book or I'll see a book shared online and um, a lot of folks are like, yeah, that's a cool book, but what do you do with it? And um, I get that. Um, I, I like I go into books and I'm like, mm, what can I do? But like, how can I make this part of a music lesson? But what I've sort of realized is we don't have to have like, you know, you don't have to read this book and be like, mm, well, they're, they're talking about this thing that makes me think of a pattern or it makes me think of a poem I know or Ooh, I've got a song for that. Like you don't have to have the automatic lead into the next part of the lesson. You don't have have to if you have that cool like if you're like oh I got this really cool rhythmic pattern that I want to do with that great you know but I think I think that we as music teachers go into like a how do you read a book you can't just read it you gotta have something musical to do with it well I don't think that homeroom teachers think that like you know I go into well now I'm going into all the classrooms but I go into classrooms and I see books that are like up um, as like featured books and they're all on like a theme, you know, like friendship or uh, pattern recognition or, you know, whatever, Westford Ho or whatever. They are on a theme, but I don't think that the teacher's like, well, you know, okay, let me find the exact lead into the next thing. A book, can, you can just read the book. Like that's, that's a part of it. And one of the things that I found is that when I give myself the allowance to just read the book, 
we have really cool conversations that I don't get when I'm like, you know, this makes me think of a song I know. Like that cuts off the conversation if I go right from the book to the song. So, or to the rhythm or to the whatever lesson element I have planned, right? So it's okay to just read the book, right? These books though, if you wanted a next thing, it's really actually not that difficult to find like cool videos online or um, audio recordings of Celia Cruz or Tito Puente. Um, it, and you can find some really great examples of their life. Or if you're like, but I don't, I don't know if I can find anything about Tito Puente. Well, okay, you could, then, you could do a segue into like, what is Mambo, you know, or like, what is rumba? Or, you know, you could, you could talk about Celia. Where, you know, where is she from? Hmm. What, I wonder what other musical things they have there. You know, like there are so many cool connections you can make just through conversation or just from exploring, um, the, the, the subject of the book. That's okay. So anyway, these are two cool books about, um, well-known musicians that are just gorgeous. The, the illustrations are amazing. They're award winners. Um, and they're both in English and in Spanish. So I, can, I would really encourage you to find a way to incorporate the Spanish language as you read that. Okay, what, there was another one I wanted to share about sort of with that, hold on. Okay, here's another great example of, but what do you do with it? I have been holding onto this book forever. It's called Island Born. Um, and it's this just great book about, well, um, I'll read the first page or two. Um, Every kid in Lola's school was from somewhere else. Hers was the school of faraway places. Maya was from a city so big that it was like its own country. Uh, India and Cam Camilla were from a stony village at the tippy top of the world. Mateo had lived in a desert so hot even the cactus fainted. Nu was born in a jungle famous for its tigers and its poets. And Lola was from the island. So it goes on and it's sort of like the, the teacher gives out this assignment where um, you're supposed to draw a picture of the country you're originally from, your first country, and bring it in tomorrow. Um, and she's like, but I I left so early, I sort of, I don't remember what it was like. And people are like, well, what do people around you remember? Um, and so she goes and she starts asking, you know, all the other kids have these cool stories. She goes and she starts asking people in her community, well, like, what, what was it like? And they explain in sort of their own way. And it's a really beautiful explanation of people talking about history and culture in their own way through their own perceptions. Um, it's just, it's a really cool book. But I was like, well, what am I gonna do a musical? But there is so much that she talks about like, oh, our culture, there was music everywhere you know like i think that it's it's cool to like incorporate like well you know what is it about and where are they from and you know what are learning different cultures like even if like i'm not originally from there or like she's like i'm from there but i don't remember and so like how do you learn about culture how do you learn about those things how do you take those pieces that you get from all the different people and make like a tapestry understanding of what that place actually is. And so I love that when they're talking about it, they talk about how much a part music is in the culture, but also just talking about the culture. So um, I, you don't have to have like that, I'm gonna take this in a special musical direction, we're gonna talk about form. Like this can just be incorporated into a whole unit about understanding other cultures or trying to get more comprehensive view of what uh, makes a culture or what makes a people or you know like it can be a part of that lesson framework and this is the year where we have all the time to do that you know like we have the time to incorporate those little fringe things that maybe we haven't done before like I don't know how I'm going to do that and it's okay to read some of these books and make them a part of that bigger conversation so as I'm talking to my students about um, Latinx Heritage Month, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to talk about um, the island, which they uh, talk about as Cuba, I believe. Um, it's been so long since I picked this up, sorry. Um, they talk about it and they, they like give this idea of all these people seeing what the culture is like and how they came together and, um, oh, let's see, where's this other part? Yeah. Oh, they're fighting the monster and all the things and how, like, I mean, just as they're standing looking like the 
the the flowers and the foliage and music is popping out everywhere like you can just talk about how that's a part of the framework of the culture and anyway so this just another cool book that like you don't have to you don't have to have like that next musical thing to do for a book to be worth using in your class um, okay so those three books are on the links page if you want them for the the latinx heritage month books um, a couple more that I think are really, really cool. Um, so the best mariachi in the world, I shared about this one last year. This is about a little boy who wants to be in the mariachi band, but he can't play instruments and he's afraid that he can't. Oh, sorry, it's so shiny. Um, he, he's like, how am I gonna? I can't get it to not shine on the thing. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so it's about um, how, you know, how can he be a part of the mariachi? How can he, you know, uh, how can he jump into this world um, and he because he can't play anything um, but he becomes the singer of the group and that's something he finds out later it's just a really cool story and I love it for a lot of reasons but um, it is great because mariachi music is something that a lot of our kids can connect with um, either like oh I've heard that or I've seen the people wearing those outfits or I've seen those instruments or this sounds familiar so like to get to use this book it helps you place mariachi music as like a valid musical form that like yeah we sh you should be in mariachi um but also like helps kids identify what that is like oh i've seen that at a restaurant or i saw that on tv or you know it helps making those connections um and also I also love it because the kid is like, I'm failing at all these things. I can't play the trombone. I can't play the guitar. I can't play whatever. Like singing is important too, you know? So like it's, it helps. And also it's the, a kid protagonist. So I love that when the kid is the main character of the book. So the best mariachi in the world, this one's written by JD Smith. Okay, let's see. And another one. I've already sh I shared about this one last week, but this is another really, or last week, last year, Dancing Hands. Um, this is the story of uh, Teresa Carreño. Um, she was um, a little girl who was like a prolific pianist, um, became a composer, uh, became a performer. She played for President Lincoln. Um, she lived in Venezuela, and then her family, they left because there was civil war, and guess what? Um, they showed up in the United States during the Civil War. <laughs> she really had a rough life. It was like, it was, anyway, it was a really rough life. But um, she persevered. She kept doing her thing. She kept playing. She kept getting better and better. Became very, very, very well known. Um, and this is just another gorgeous book that talks about her life. Has a, a child protagonist. Um, and there are so many ways you could jump off from this. You could talk about um, composers through time. You could talk about female composers. You could talk about the piano. You could talk about, I mean, whatever. There are so many different things that you could do with this book. It's another great one to incorporate um, or even just to read um, because it talks about like perseverance through a really tough time. So all all good reasons to read um, the book and to, to, you know, add that into your lessons. I have a ton more books on that Amazon list um, of books that you can incorporate. I've got a bunch more here that if I have time, I'll pull out and show you. Um, some are songbooks um, that are illustrated songbooks, not that we're probably singing in the classroom, but like maybe on a video, right? Um, some are, you know, just, just fun examples or great stories, but just think about how you can incorporate um, into books into your lessons, um, whether you're celebrating or highlighting Latinx Heritage Month or not, which I saw somebody talk about, it's September 15th through October 15th. Um, whether you're celebrating it or not, it, these are great books to incorporate really any time of year. Um, and and there are a lot, of, um, a lot of fun ways to incorporate it, whether you're just reading the book, which is totally fine and valid, or whether you're bringing it into some sort of musical rhythmic aspect or something else, there are a lot of cool things you can do with these books. Okay, so that's Latinx Heritage Month. Um, if we have time, I'll share a few more books at the end, but I suspect I will run out of time. So I wanted to share a little bit about um, second grade lessons this week, what I'm teaching, how I'm teaching it, what that looks like, and give you a little bit more of a perspective on that. One of the things that I um, 
stumbled upon this week that was like, why haven't I done this before? I you know I'm going into the classroom. I have like my lesson plans at this point are just scribbles on paper, you know, like because I've had to change and adapt and do things so often. So um, I don't have them like in a book or anything right now. I just have sort of loose leaf papers, one for each grade level. And so to make them easier to grab and find, but also as I'm going to classrooms and I'm thinking about like, I gotta hand wash in and out, you know, like how I'm gonna keep things clean. Um, I realized like, oh, why don't you put your lesson plans in these dry erase pockets? <laughs> um, that's a great, you know, a great way to, to organize because one, I can color code them for the grade level. Love that. Um, they're dry erase pockets, so it's just clear plastic. And once you're, you know, if you're worried or whatever, you can just wipe them down. You can lice all these. Um, so this is just a super easy way now for me to be like, ooh, I need my, I need fifth grade. That one's green, you know, or whatever, and pull that out. And then you don't have to worry about like your lessons getting dirty or spilling coffee on them or whatever. They're here in the, the pockets and they're safe. So that was the one like game changer for me for the week that I was like, oh, I gotta tell everybody about this. So if you already have these, great. If you don't, um, you can get them on Amazon or Wal probably Walmart. I don't know. They're everywhere. Uh, probably in your office at school. Ask another teacher, hey, you've got, have you got like six pockets that I can borrow? I mean, I don't know. Um, but they're they're really cool they're not expensive i think i even have them on my amazon links page but um that i i've been putting all my lessons in there and it has been wonderful so i want to talk to you about what my lessons look like i've shared already before i'm on a hybrid schedule at the moment and <laughs> probably going to change but um basically in like a five day period um the first day is a zoom day where i see the entire class on zoom no one's at school, just the teachers at school. We Zoom with the kids. And then the next day, um, we have, we're hybrid. So half of the kids are at home, half of the kids are in school for two days, and then they flip flop. So then the kids who are at home come to school and the kids who are at school go home and do uh, their thing. So for me, there's the day where I'm Zooming with the whole class for 50 minutes-ish. And then I have two, two days of in-person lessons and then while those, while those kids are in front of me learning, I have to have something that the kids at home can do on their own without really any guidance from me that can just go and do a music lesson for 50 minutes at home, um, which has been tricky to, <laughs> to plan, but I think I'm there. I think I've, I've mostly got it. So I wanted to share with you the, the in-person stuff and then try and get to the out of school stuff too. One thing, I'll, another thing I'll show you. So the, the lesson plan pockets was something that was really helpful. Um, I wanna show you what my PowerPoint looks like. I talked about this last week, but when I go into the classroom, um, so my computer, I have the, the projector going, here's my computer, welcome to music. That's, you know, me, right? So then um, the next page, oh, there's a picture of me without a mask so they can see what that looks like because a lot of the kids are just gonna see me in a mask, right? But um, then uh, I have everything on the PowerPoint. And so like, oh, there's a little welcome video, a silly video I made on, I made on iMovie, right? So that's there. Then I just have a clip art of a cat because the next thing we're gonna do is the copycat. But for me, I just have that reminder. So I'm not continually going to look at my lesson plans. I don't have to, because here it is in the, in the slide deck. And the next one, I have seven jumps and I have embedded into this, the song. Right, and then I know the next thing is rickety rackety rockety ree, but it's here on the slide deck so that I'm not running back and forth to my lesson plan. I'm not touching my computer when I'm in the classroom as much with kids. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm away from that. So I just have my clicker and it just goes. If I can embed a song, I embed a song. If I have a video, I try and embed it. If I have a video where I have to go online, I put a link on the thing so that I can just click and go, right? To save myself time, to save my sanity um, as I'm going through the class. They are not fancy slides. Not fancy. Um, uh, let's see if I can click through. Um, oh yeah. You have a Kahoot plant, you know, like it's not really anything fancy, but it, oh, and then I go right into Note Neighborhood. So it, it just makes it easier for me. So I'm not rushing back and forth between things. I'm not touching my computer more than I need to. Um, so it's just sort of simple. 
Um, I know back in the day, a lot of times when people would use smart boards, sometimes they would just load up their smart board slide deck with all the stuff they're gonna do. So I can just click through and slide through and use it as like sort of a big note reminder. Um, and so that's sort of what I'm doing and that helps me stay organized. So thought if there's something you wanna do, it, it doesn't have to look fancy. It can just be a background in the words. That's, that's fine. Um, but it helps me stay on track. Do I normally see kids twice a week for 50 minute each classes? I do during the pandemic. Um, I will this year in a normal year. No, I would see kids twice a week for 30 minutes. I would see the whole school um, in a week, twice. But this year it's different. I have one class, one homeroom per grade level uh, for five days. First day is a Zoom day, and then two in person with two at home, with two digital, two, two days in person with the other kids doing digital lessons, and then we switch. So no, this is not normal. <laughs> but um, let me go through my lesson plans. I see people already asking about some of the lesson things. I'm gonna just jump through and talk about sort of how I'm adapting and how I'm using it. So the kids come in, um, I hook up my computer, I airplay, we, you know, we get going. Um, the first thing, we have a little welcome video. I pull out my cat, uh, Tabby the cat, and ta oh, sorry, before I even get to the in-person stuff. Um, so, the online lesson to like get us going for the week is my way to introduce myself. I'm new to the school this year. We sing um, and learn Aiken Drum, and the kids get to sort of help create Aiken Drum because if you know Aiken Drum at all, um, that's the whole sort of point of the lesson. I, I use that 50 minutes to talk to them, to say hi, to introduce myself, to learn and sing Aiken Drum, um, and then. Uh, sort of go from there, kids get to create together. Um, we also spend time so that they can get Nearpod downloaded on their iPad because they're gonna need it for their at-home lessons. Um, and then that's basically all the time that we have in that Zoom class, because it takes a long time to get kids in, to get figure out who's there, do that whole, whole thing. So um, that's my online thing, but it launches us into the week. It's a sung thing. Anytime I have at-home time, I try and do a song because I'm not singing in school. Um, and so it, it gives us a, a way to do that and also a way to collaborate and create together. I use my favorite folk song set that I did for Aiken Drum to give a little bit of history, to have visuals that for, um, for the whole lesson and to sort of guide us through. And that's what I do for the at-home lesson. So then the next day, some of the kids are working at home and I'll talk through the at-home assignments of the things that kids are doing on their iPads at home in a minute. But I'm gonna start with the in-person lessons um, and uh, I see on Instagram, Brittany says, I'm in the computer lab for now. Any lesson plans for online music games? Yes, in fact, there is a giveaway right now for online interactive games. Um, you can find them on my Facebook page or on the links page. Um, it's there. You can click my link in profile in there and you down, you can sign up for to win. Okay, um, so I have uh, Tabby and um, Tabby comes in and Tabby does the copycat song or a copycat, not song, the, the poem, and it goes, copycat, copycat, one, two, three, do what I do after me, anything I do, you do the same, that's how you play the copycat game. Obviously, Tabby goes, copycat, copycat, one, two, three, do what I do, you know, uh, and the kids get to copy. So then, um, after each time we learn that, um, then Tabby makes me do something that the kids can copy. Um, also, I've gotten really into like when the puppets are available for the Zooms, the, the puppets like get really into like, we, you know, we, we do the thing where the puppets get a look at the camera or there's like the, and they pop out of the screen. That's one of my favorite things to do with students is like, <laughs> it's like play with the screen. Anyway, so um, we do the copycat and what are some things that we can copy? So I can uh, do a clapping pattern, they echo, clapping pattern, they echo, we can do body percussion right? One of the other things that I've been trying as much as I can is to find ways to get kids out of their desks, out of their seats, and moving. How do you do that when they can't really move through the classroom? It's tricky. So one of the things that I do when I do copycat is I'll do like motions, like movements, like up, down, cross, we'll go, you know, we'll sort of like adapted stretches, or maybe we'll do like, you know, pattern movement, or we'll do like or something like that where they're moving, they're getting up and going, you know, doing whatever. Or I'll have them sit next to their desk, crisscross next to their desk, but not at their desk. So just break things up. 
Um, it's hard to do crisscross next to your desk because then they can't always see me because there are desks in the way. So it's just tricky, but um, I use this copycat game to get them up and moving as well as um, clapping and echoing and all that sort of thing. Um, Tabby gets in on that action because I make Tabby do a thing where the people echo her because Tabby doesn't like copying. Tabby doesn't like copying. Tabby likes to copy. Tabby likes to copy. She doesn't make up her own thing. She doesn't make up her own thing. But I make her make up her own thing. But I make, wait, what? Yeah, I'm gonna make you do the thing where like they have to copy you. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I don't do that. I copy, I do not get copied. Okay, but you, I'm sure they could find something you could do. No. Okay, well they're, they're copying you, so do your thing. No. And the kids are like, no. I don't want to. I don't want to. Stop that. And the kids are like, stop that. You know, they're into it. So um, Tabby can do lots of things where she'll do like, hmm, 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 <clears throat> You know, like she can do whatever. There are lots of things that Tabby can do that the kids can echo. And the kids like that. It breaks up. Um, it breaks up the, the lesson that uh, they're copying the cat. They're not copying me. But there are so many things you can do for copying, especially movement, especially get kids up and out of their seats so that they're not just sitting at their desks the whole time. We do um, a version of seven jumps. So if you know seven jumps, dun, 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 walk, walk, dun, 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 and there's the, you know, standing and moving and you're sort of moving around the room. Um, which is great, but how do you do that now? Well, so we, I start out where you just do uh, movement at your desk. So the first time when I'm explaining it, I say, okay, so there's this fun little song and I'm gonna give it to you and I, I just need you to learn the actions. So it goes like this. Can you just keep the, like a, like a, like a, like your hands or feet and they're gonna walk on your knees? Okay, let me try that again. Oh, that's great. Okay. The next part was like this. Oh, great. Okay, let's put that together. So let me put that together. And then I go, ooh, and the hardest part is your hand really wants to land on your knee, but it cannot do it until I go. You can't put it on your knee until you hear the bum at the end. Okay, try again. Bum, bum, bum. So we put it together. So we're still sitting at our desk. We put it together and it goes down. And then we'll do it a second time at our desk where I say first hand. Now your second hand. Oh man, that's so tricky. And then we'll transition from that to standing and doing it standing, non locomotor, where you just change the action. So da 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 becomes walking in place. Clap 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 da 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 da. So you clap 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 then turn around. Clap 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 then turn around. So then if if this turned into your feet walking, then going ba ba turns into your foot above the ground. Ba ba and having to put your foot down on the ground. So then you just tran uh, transfer the actions. The the song for Seven Jumps I think is on the Shenanigans album. It's on. Spotify, I think, but you can also get it, um, I think in Rhythmically Moving Volume 2, and also I think it's on the Shenanigans CD, and I'm also pretty sure it's on YouTube. But you can get that song um, and use it, and it's super fun, but it gets kids up and out of their seat. Again, right next to their chair, because they can't really move around the room, but up in their chair, and they're doing non locomotor movements, and it's getting them up and moving and, and listening. And so I really like the seven jumps for that. We do rickety rackety rockety re, which many of you know the poem. Rickety rackety rockety re. Will you say your name for me? And I point to a kid and they say their name. And then we all say their name. Normally I would do that in a seated circle around the class and I'd hand around my yarn ball and whoever has the yarn ball gets to say their name. Can't do that. So instead they're sitting at their desk and I say whoever I point to, they get to say their name. Rickety rackety rockety re. Will you say your name for me? Jennifer. And then I go, Jennifer, and we all get to say it, right? So then I go around the room and we do, and each kid gets to do their own thing on day one. When we get to day two, I'll tell you how I change it. But it's just, instead of, you know, going around the circle, whatever, we're just going around the room. The kids still get to say their names. We all get to say it after them. 
Um, we do uh, a quick vocab on what is the difference between forte and piano. We talk about, uh, you can also then take the word forte and use like its initial, just the letter F, the symbol F means forte and just the symbol P means piano. And we talk about those different things. And then I show one of my favorite videos of all time. And it is um, the artist Bjork, who is an Icelandic, um, uh, well, musical artist. Um, and she does, well here, I'll just show you here. Um, she does this really, really crazy video called It's Oh So Quiet. And I'll just show you a tiny bit here. Ooh, that got really bright. Um, oh yeah, here we zoom through here. So it's a super fun little song. So we talk about quiet and loud. What part is this? Is this forte or is this piano? Oh, this would be piano. This is the quiet part. Ooh, sorry. And so peaceful until you fall in love. What part is this? Oh, it's the forte part. And then it goes back to piano. So the video is super fun. You can get it if you have a DVD of all of the music videos of Michel Gondry, who is a is a, a, a music video director. But if you don't have that, it's also not streaming on YouTube. It's been on YouTube, off YouTube, on YouTube, off YouTube, taken on and off because of copyright. But you can find it now on IMDb of all places. It's there. You can show it, you can make it big on your screen. Um, so it's, and it's free to, to watch. Um, lyrics are fine, but it is the absolute clearest example of the difference between forte and piano. So I love it when I'm talking about just those two as sort of a dichotomy, because it is very, very, very clear what is quiet and what is loud. <laughs> so it's a, a great video to show. Um, and the kids just get a, a kick out of it. At one point, like a, a post office box jumps to life and columns come to life and people just break out dancing and it is, it is super, super fun. Um, and then my kids, we jump into the note neighborhood. We learn quarter note, eighth notes, and quarter rest all in one day because we're going to set up and use those again in the next lesson. Ooh, Jennifer says it's on Vimeo too. I couldn't find it there. It was on Vimeo and then pulled off and then I guess it's back there too. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. So that's day one of in-person lessons. The second day we come back and for, you know, consistency and everything else, we do copycat again, just a slightly different version of that. Um, there's a book called Stretch, um, which I shared about before, um, and you can find that on the links page. But I've shared about that before, and it, it's sort of our inspiration to get up and moving. Um, we do rickety rackety rockety re again, but this time instead of just saying our name, like, will you say your name for me? Along with each person's name, they have to have some sort of movement or action. So like rickety rackety rockety re, will you say your name for me? And the person would be like, Denise. And we'll have to go, Denise, or like, uh, Brayden, or like, Right, you know, we all have to do our sort of own thing. So um, adding the movement, again, it's just one more reason for them to not be sitting in their chair um, and to, to get up and do a little bit of a move. It's just a slight adaptation to the poem that they already know, but they're all about it. Okay, we do then read a book called Chewy Louie. And I've shared about this before, but I, I try this year, if I have a book, if I have something like that, um, I try and pre-record me reading the book um, so that I'm talking less in class, so that I am not touching as many things and moving around things or leaving things in the classroom or just, you know, transfer of, of whatever. I, I, I try not to pull out books if I can. So I have pre-recorded myself reading Chewy Louie 
um, and I press play. And it's also a chance for me to sort of pause, to step back, to reassess how's this going, what I need to do with flow, whatever. We read Chewy Louie. Um, we talk about the different foods Chewy Louie might eat if he were going to be eating um, things around the house. Because the book I've shared about before, I think I shared maybe in the second Musical Mondays of the school year, um, Chewy Louie chews all the things. He eats the toys. He eats things around the house. He bites you know, all sorts of stuff. So we talk about what he might eat. That leads into talking about different kinds of food. Um, and then we dissect, you know, huh, foods and rhythms. And, and uh, you know, we talk about like, how many sounds does that food have? Apple. And most of my kids are used to that, like separating out syllables by clapping it. Apple, you know, macaroni. You know, they're used to that. So instead of just talking about the syllables or the sound in the word, then we, we translate that to notes and we talk about the building, building bricks of notes and it leads into the game that I shared um, a couple weeks ago called uh, Grandma's Table where there's the, the foods um, that you have to identify. It's a, an online, it can be on a Chromebook or iPad or whatever, and it's a game that kids can play and identify different foods. And they love that. All my kids have iPads at our school. It's brand new this year that they all have iPads. And so they're like all about it. Um, and it's fun. I had kids racing each other like the second time they did it. Because they're like, oh, my sister's over there. I want to race her. Okay, cool. So, um, but it was just fun to like see them really get into it and really get excited about it um, and figure out the different words. And also because I'm doing this in class with them, I'm able to walk around to each kid and be like, oh, you're not getting that one. Let's clap it together. Or let's talk about why this one is two versus two plus one instead of one plus two, you know, or um, whatever, and to, to make those connections. So Chewy Louie leads to foods really well because the, and this game really well because the game is about, you know, a dog stealing the food off the table. Um, and it's super easy for the kids to, to, to do and have fun with. And that's basically, oh, and then Note Neighborhood, we do a review if we have time. Um, and that's basically all the time for those two days, those 50 minute lessons. Um, that's basically all we have time for. I wanna show you the digital versions because while I'm in person with those kids, I have other kids at home doing digital lessons. So I shared a little bit about this, but I, I just want you to see it because I don't want you to think that like my lessons are really cool. <laughs> like I'm, I'm proud of them, I think they're really fun, but I want you to see the elements that go into them if I can show them to you. So I'm using Nearpod. Oh, why can't I? There we go. I'm using Nearpod, um, which is an app. It's a free app. Sorry, Instagram, I'm gonna try and get that. There we go. It's a, ooh, okay. Oh, now that's gonna be backwards. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to flip this again. There we go. So it's a free app. Um, it's available for iPods, you can all, or iPads. You can also use it. Um, on web browsers, but I just want to show you sort of how, what the elements look like in my kiddos lessons. So basically, we, you can give kids a lesson code, which is what I'm going to show you in my other lesson codes. Let's see. Um, okay, so this is what kids would see. Welcome to music. Okay, so this is at home lesson one. Oh my gosh, this looks literally just like my PowerPoint slide from in the classroom because I wanted to, I want the continuity there. So this is the silly little video that I made on iMovie of welcome to music class of me being a goofball. But the reason I show them this is that as I want them to see in the classroom what it looks like at the music room. This took me literally 15 minutes on iMovie. This is me being a nutball. Okay. So I'm gonna stop that before I show too much. Anyway, so that's what they see. But again, it's just a reason for them to see the music room, to see me with my mask off, all that. Then we get to sing. This is me teaching the song Ram Sam Sam. This is just me pre-recorded singing the song. It's just a few minutes long, but they get to sing through and sing with me. Hi friends, I'm excited to sing a new... So again, I'm just as much as I can at home doing singing, this is what we're doing. Um, your name is a song. I recorded myself reading the book and sharing about that. So that's in there. Um, this is really cool thing about Nearpod. Um, it says, I love the book, Your Name is a Song. What would it sound like if you sang your name? Record yourself singing your own name or the name of someone in your family. And actually, I was able to record myself here. I love the book, Your Name is a Song. What would it sound like if you sang 
I just did that because a lot of times, especially if this is like second grade, if I have a struggling reader, I don't know that they can really read that, you know, or that they would be looking for that, but they'll probably be looking for a play button. So being able to add in that um, voiceover is really cool. And then they can record themselves singing their name and it'll submit to me. So like, Mr. Rao, you know, however they want to sing it, they can listen back to themselves. Mr. Rao. And then when they're ready, they can submit, which is cool. Um, there's this video series from the Sydney Opera House called Who's in the Lift with the elevator and the kids get to go and see uh, who's in the elevator. It's like a secret inside. Let me just play the first part. So it's a super cute video series and every time is someone different. And this time, it's an opera singer. Hi. Hello. So the thing I, I, I love this video series, and I'm uh, the links for that are on the links page, but the cool thing again is that they have not left Nearpod. This is a YouTube video, it's free. I didn't do it, I didn't download it, nothing. Um, and all of the pre-recorded videos I did, I recorded and put on my YouTube channel as unlisted videos, and I linked them into Nearpod. But the kids have not left Nearpod. It's still just click to the next one, click to the next one. And that's what I love about Nearpod is it simplifies everything. Um, these videos are free, super fun. I chose the opera singer for the first one, but you can, you know, there's also like sound engineer or stagehand or like they're just different um, people who are part of this. Oh, sorry, we're gonna go to the next one. She'll be coming around the mountain. Another, as you can see, these are like loaded down with singing or songs, basically every activity is something like that. This is a video of the author, Jonathan Emmett, um, reading the book and also giving some actions, which is sort of fun. Let me zoom through here and see if you can get to. So yeah, here he is. He's like showing them the action they need to do. Yeah, that's one of the actions. That he changes the words a little bit, but then he goes through and reads his own song or his own book and then does all the actions with the kids. Again, for them to sort of sing along. And at the end, I can ask in a poll, what was your favorite part of the lesson today? Was it Ram Sam Sam, your name is a song, who's in the lift, she'll be coming around the mountain. And they can submit all that to me, I get that data. That's about 50 minutes, probably more, but it's um, something they can do. Just little elements that I have pieced together. Me singing, me reading, a fun video I found online, all different things they can do. And that's in the first day. Let me show this second day. But again, the thing I really love is it's me. It's me doing it singing. So they're seeing me, they're getting to experience, hear my voice, see our music room, um, and, and all that's just little pieces pieced together through Nearpod. Let me show you the second day. Um, so lesson two, right? They get to add their name so I know who did it. Um, Here's me singing uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. It's a really beautiful rendition, but I'm not gonna show it to you. Here's, this is what I showed you, I think last week or the week before, showing you how the vocal exploration, how you can do that with the kids using the, Hi friends, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, the accessibility function. You can see the little cursor thing is gonna be going here in a second. So the kids think this is really cool because it's like animated, but it's also me just just doing it, right? So this is again something that I recorded, I loaded to YouTube, and then I could just embed it into Nearpod. Oops. We get to sing again. This time we're gonna learn about uh, Sweetly Sings the Donkey. Another thing I love about Nearpod is you can do voiceovers for each slide. Sweetly Sings the Donkey, our favorite folk song of the week. So I'm gonna zoom through. I, I have. All, those are all from my favorite folk song set, but I have, you know, different things like uh, the page about what is a donkey, you know, and um, to give kids more context and more understanding. And then they get to sing it. They, there's a little animated version I found. Um, then we hear this an actual donkey sounds. I get to hear what it's donkey braying sounds like. It just gives them fun context. Um, I do a lesson on solfege where we talk, um, sing through so, me, do, and la, I think in this one. And then like, another cool thing Nearpod does is I can have um, a matching lesson. So they get to match the syllable to the symbol. And this time I'm giving them the symbol with the word on it, just like they saw in the video. But next time I will be t just doing the hand sign and not 
the little symbol on the side. But it's a fun little matching game that's a part of Nearpod. Instrument close-up. In this one, there's another video from the Sydney Opera House called George Meets the Orchestra. Um, and so George, this little young boy, gets to go around and meet the Sydney Youth Orchestra, see the different instrument families. That's pretty fun to do. And then uh, there's a read-along version of Sing and Dance in Your Polka Dot Pants by Eric Litwin. There it is. And at the end of the lesson, there's another, what was your favorite part? Uh, they can submit that or not. And then I have a goodbye slide. And that's it. Those are my online lessons. Let me see if you've got any questions here. <laughs> turn, turn this back around. Um, ooh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, um, just as like a final follow up, some a couple ideas. None of the things on that Nearpod are like life changing or uh, fancy. It's just a lot of it is just me singing or me taking them through things or me whatever. My thought with planning lessons for at home learning was well, I don't want to have a lot of text of like what they have to do. I don't want them to have to like read or get an adult to try and help them. And probably a lot of what I want them to do is like sing and experience and, and hear. So the Nearpod lets me just put it all into one long slideshow. And I have, um, you know, just all of that in one place and they get to just go through it really seamlessly. All they have to do is hit next and they go to the next thing, next play, next play. And they either sing along with me or they can sometimes do the little interactive games. They can expose to new content around the world. Like I can't take them to the Sydney Opera House, but those videos do. You know, so they're just, all that is sort of strung together, little pieces. Put as many or as few in the lesson as you want, you know, but like that's, that's what my kids are experiencing because I'm able to sort of put all that together. And like I said, for, especially for K1 and 2, just tapping to the next slide is enough, you know, rather than like, go compose a thing and then take a picture, like what? Like, you know, I needed something that they can like press and play, only this is not just press and play and watch a video. It's like, I'm there prompting them like, okay, sing along with me this time, <gasps> you know, and going through. And so it's like taking elements from the class that I would already be teaching them if I could and just putting it online. So I see, let me go through a couple comments. Someone said, I've recorded several of your note neighborhoods for my kids and put them on your unlisted YouTube. Cool. I'm doing like a screen recording thing. Uh, what does this look like for under second grade? Also in your pod? Yes. Only the content is different. So instead, I might sing different songs. I might throw in different connective, connective activities. Um, but again, my kinders, once they're into Nearpod and they can get in there with the help of an adult or actually a lot, some of them on their own, once they're in, they can click play, they can go to the next thing, they can do the interactive stuff. That's not a problem for them, especially because Nearpod lets you do voiceovers and record the sound so that if they're ever like, I don't know what any of this says because I can't read yet because I'm a kindergartner, they can press play and it can read it to them. Uh, let's see, let's see. I don't see any other sort of questions about the Nearpod stuff, which is great. Um, so, so for my thing is, um, again, near, th this setup works well for me because I see like one homeroom on Zoom and then I see two days of in-person learning while the other kids at home are doing the online lessons and then we flip-flop. And then I don't see those kids again for like five weeks. So I'm trying to pack as much as I can into those two days of at home and two days into in person um, so that they can get as much because I'm not going to see them for a long time. Um, can Nearpod work for blended and in person learning at the, virtual at the same time? Uh, yes, it can be adapted, but that's not something I can answer in the next like couple minutes. <laughs> it's sort of a longer question. How long does it take to create the entire Nearpod lesson? It depends on how much you put into it. If you have a lot of videos, if you stop and start over when you're recording videos, which I don't do like, oh no, I messed up that lyric. I'm gonna start the video over. I don't do that. But if you take all those little elements, it doesn't take long to put the videos together into one sort of bigger thing um, if you're just putting together different parts. If you're just pre-recording or finding different elements and snippets of putting it together, it just takes a little bit of planning. Um, Okay, bye Instagram. I'll see you all next week. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. 
Um, so it, it really just depends on what you do, how you craft that together, how you do all of that. But Nearpod is really simple to use. Um, I think you could do something similar on Google Slides. I don't know, I'm not familiar with Google Slides. But Nearpod makes it seamless and because it's its own app on the iPad and because they never have to navigate away, it makes it really easy for kids to just go from front to end. Even if they're singing along or doing interactive stuff, they never leave the app and they're they're just, it's simple to click through. So that's why I love Nearpod for that reason. It's one of the things I love. And there are a lot of cool interactive functions too, but I just love it. It's super simple for me to plan and create and go. And I've gotten a couple emails from parents like, we sang along with you at home. Like, cool, you know, like that's the point is I want kids singing and I couldn't find another way aside from recording myself and putting that into snippets of giving them the sung parts of my lessons that I would normally do if I could at school. Um, I didn't know how to do that at home if I wasn't like live with them and I knew I wouldn't be. So this gives me the opportunity to sort of bring that live classroom experience to their self-directed lesson. Does Nearpod work on Chromebooks? It doesn't have an app for Chromebooks, but you, you can send them a link um, and they can do it in their web browser. Um, with anything, you could even do it the web browser of your iPad if your school won't let you download the, the app or whatever. It, it works in browsers, but it works really well on the, the um, app. But it doesn't have to be on an iPad. It can be on a Chromebook. It can be whatever um, you want. And Nearpod Silver, which is like the baseline, is free. So you can go in and play around. There's also a, a library on there of like pre-made lessons that someone else has done that you can like download and, and use. So go in and try it and play around and see if you can like open it in a web browser. Or how does it work for you? Or what are the interactive elements or whatever? You can do all of that for free. Um, can you share a lesson with someone? There isn't much on Nearpod for music. There are some things. But yeah, there's not a, a ton yet. You can share your lessons with other people. It just depends how you do that, Jenny. It's sort of tricky. My kids use it on Chromebooks and it is also an app within Canvas. Yes, and it integrates with Canvas. I forgot to say that. Anyway, I'm not a Nearpod ambassador or anything. I just, I've been, I bought it. I bought the gold subscription and I've been using it and it's been working so, so well. And I'm planning to put all my sub plans on there so the sub can just click through and do the same thing. Cause so often I get, subs who can't do that. But you can do self-directed lessons. You can do where you push out and the kids do the, uh, the pace that you give them. It's, it has a lot of cool functions and different um, adaptations. Anyway, I'm out of time. I'd love to talk more about Nearpod. If you have questions, um, add them into the Facebook group, Every Moment Matters, Music Education Facebook group. And don't forget that all those, the interactive game bundle giveaway is going on right now. Um, you can find it on my Facebook page. You can find it on Twitter, on my Twitter. Um, or it's on the links page and you have from now until Tuesday night at midnight to enter. You can share it with all your friends, they can all enter. And actually, if you share it through Facebook or Twitter, or whatever, you get an extra entry. So go have fun, share with other people, and um, hopefully you'll win, because four people are gonna win. Because I know those interactive games are fun and a lot of people, I want them to have the opportunity to use them. So, okay, thanks so much for coming along with me tonight. I hope I'll see you next Monday for week seven of uh, mus uh, Musical Mondays. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or find me on Facebook. All right, everyone, have a great night.